Hello, I'm Christina with The Turned Leg. I love to salvage, repurpose, and create and help others to do the same. I also love to save old pieces of furniture. But when you find that old piece of furniture on the side of the road or in a thrift store or an estate sale, you have to make sure you're not getting in over your head. So for this video, I'm gonna show you how I make over this table that I got at the thrift store for $24. I'm gonna show you what I look at and how I inspect my pieces to make sure that they're probably going to be fixable. You don't wanna get a piece of furniture that you put tons of hours into and then you still can't complete it. I'm also gonna show you how I take this poor sad piece and make it beautiful again. So let's get started. I was so excited to find this piece at my local thrift store and best of all was the price. It was only $24.95 and it passed my first test. It was an extremely sturdy piece. Once I had loaded this piece into my cart, a little old man at the thrift store came up to me and commented on what a beautiful piece it was and of course I agreed. He then went on to tell me that if it was his project, he would just slap a piece of Formica on the top and make it usable again. Yeah, Formica. Great plan. Well, that is not my plan for this little table. Thanks so much for watching this video. I do want to ask a favor, and that is if you're enjoying this video, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel. Also, click the bell for notifications. It really helps me to continue to help others to salvage, repurpose, and create. Once I've determined the piece is sturdy, I like to inspect it. This piece is a hot mess and it's really important you don't get in over your head. The top of the piece has a lot of damage and these are not small holes. This is major peeling veneer and even the layer under the veneer has also been weakened and has give to it. Really cool on this table is it does have a drawer that slides out. The advantage of the drawer was I was able to check to make sure there was some usable wood under the layer of veneer above. So that's the good news. There's some wood there. My plan for the top is to patch and paint. But first I had to remove the peeling veneer. The best way to do this is with a paint scraper and you just dig in and get off as much as you can. If I were to leave this, and paint the table, the moisture would cause more of the veneer to lift and make a big mess of the whole table. When you're working with furniture, one thing you always can plan on is things are not going to go as planned. And of course, that's the case with this piece. If you remember what we started out with, we had three spots that looked like they had water damage. And I thought I could kind of chip up the area around those three spots and patch it with Bondo and sand it down and paint it. But we now have, and this is just with my putty knife, the veneer almost all the way across the table that we could easily lift up. And that had to be removed before we applied the Bondo. So now, I have quite a huge chunk where the veneer is gone. I thought the veneer would be really hard to get off of this table just because of how it is finished. Um, it looked like it was very secure. That is not the case. And I also have another spot over there of water damage where I'm going to be prying up more veneer. So plans have changed. I'm not patching this piece with Bondo but you can click on the link to the video that I will put in right here and watch how I patch with Bondo in case you don't have quite as much veneer coming off, but it is a large hole. Bondo is great for that and I highly recommend it, but I think I'm gonna try to remove the rest of the veneer off of this table using the hot iron technique. It's a lot easier than the putty knife, but first, I'll get a little bit more with the putty knife and I'll get out the iron. While I was removing the veneer with the putty knife, I also used the putty knife on the base of the piece. There were lots of areas where the veneer was loose.
As you saw, when I was trying to remove the veneer before with just my scraper, it came off in tiny pieces. It was a lot of work, so I have the easy way to remove veneer. You need a dedicated iron. <laughs> you don't want to use this iron for clothes after you're done, and you can probably hear it steaming away. You want to turn it on the highest steam possible and the highest setting. And then you also need a wet towel. Lay your wet towel down on the area you want to remove the veneer and put the iron on top and just let it sit. Use your putty knife after you lift it up to quickly take off the veneer. The heat and moisture is going to loosen the glue underneath but the minute it cools down it will harden so you need to work quickly. If things are not working add more water and add more patience. The longer you let it sit, the easier it is to come up. Veneer has two parts, the top pretty part and the undercoat. And sometimes they'll come off both together, other times it's better to do it one at a time. Sometimes you can only get the pretty part off and then you have to soak everything again to get the bottom layer. Do what works best for you. And all of the veneer has been removed. Now it was time to take it outside so I could lightly sand it down with my 220 grit sandpaper and my DeWalt Orbital Sander. After removing all of the sawdust off of the piece, it was time for the next step. I decided instead of painting, I would be staining the top of this piece. For this project, I am using Debbie's Design Diary DIY Paint Dark and Decrepit. For more information on how to use Dark and Decrepit as a stain, click on the link to the video above. I still had more old veneer to remove from the bottom, but it was in a tricky spot. I realized I could take off the base of the piece just by loosening the nuts. Now I could easily get to the rest of the veneer and remove it, and my cat Sage was helping. When I removed all the veneer I could by hand, some of it was being stubborn, so I had to get back out my iron. Remember when we started this project, I said there will be one consistent when you're redoing furniture, and that is that your plans will probably change. So pretty much the whole plan on this piece has changed. I was gonna paint the top and patch it. That didn't work. Had to remove the veneer, but the good news is I can stain the top uh, this area, though, I think for consistency, I'm painting this band here. You'll see why in a second. These legs are still in excellent shape, fingers crossed. We're keeping them the natural. I might just spruce them up with a little uh, Sweet Pickens oil wax. The base that we're working on, I'll probably be putting in a picture of it. Um, I'm going to be painting it. So we're gonna be painting the base black, painting the strip, leaving natural, leaving natural on the top. Fingers crossed. I hope that's how it turns out. I gotta keep working on this piece. To paint this piece, I am using Deb's Design Diary DIY paint in the little black dress. One of my favorite paints, sticks to everything, covers really well. For more information on how to use DIY paint, click on the link above.
Now to paint the band around the top. To purchase any of the paints or products that I'm using in the video here today, you can shop my online store at shoptheturnedleg.com or if you're local, you can shop my booth at Plaza Antiques and Collectibles Mall in Lincoln Park, Michigan. The next step was to seal the black paint. In order to do that, I'm using DIY black wax. I love to use black wax over black paint. It makes a really rich, deep color. Once the first coat dries, I will be adding another. Two coats is usually plenty on a piece of furniture. To seal the top of this table, I will be using my favorite top coat, which is DIY Paint Big Top. In order to seal a table, you usually use three to five coats. Once the coat has dried, you can apply another. If you want it smoother, make sure you sand using 320 grit sandpaper in between each layer. Remember, the center part of the legs of this table were in pretty good shape, and the plan is to leave them natural, except they could use a little bit of help to waken them up a bit. An easy fix for tired out worn finishes is using oil wax from Sweet Pickens Milk Paint. In this case, I'm using dark oil wax because it will stain and top coat all in one. All you do is brush it on, let it sit for 15 minutes, and wipe it back. If you need another coat, you can apply it the next day. Oil wax is a great way to refresh old wood. The project's complete, and now it's time for the big reveal. Let's take a look at how this table I paid $24 for turned out. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope it has inspired you to get out there to salvage, repurpose, and create.